Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and holiday edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, the meteorologist DT from WeatherWist.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. Want to wish everybody season's greetings, Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, etc., etc., ad nauseum and ad infinitum. We're going to talk about lots of different topics here in This Week in Weather. Pretty busy pattern, even though for winter weather lovers in the eastern United States, it doesn't look that great. Uh, but there are lots of things to talk about here. Our topics will include the western and the central CONUS, uh, the continental U.S., the cold there, including the potential for a snow event in the hills uh, in Southern California, possibly Vegas and Arizona. That's not very common. We'll talk about the next two weeks here. Also, models versus the MJO and the QBO. And then whether or not there's any hope left for the second half of the winter at all, or is it pretty much uh, just a mass suicide pack for winter weather lovers. Let's get right to it. We'll start off by taking a look at this little event coming up here uh, for uh, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, I should say, December 30th. Now, uh, right now, the most aggressive of the models here clearly is the uh, NAM, the 12-kilometer NAM. Uh, it's developing a second wave. I've been talking about this second wave here for December 30th for several days now. You know, I mentioned it a long time ago. The, for the, the one on the 28th, that's going to be rain, okay? So the one on December 28th, let me make sure we understand that. That's going to be uh, 28 and 29. That's going to be rain. Okay, we know that, right? Okay, so that's this is the second wave. Okay, that's why this date here is important. And this is the low here. You can see the rain snow line. And that's some moderate snow here. Now, again, the NAM is the most aggressive of all the models here, but I think it's going to be correct. Uh, now, the ground temperatures may be too warm, uh, and we have to make certain that the low-level cold air really gets in here. But right now, the trend is looking pretty good here. If we go to the next image, this is the new one, which came out here Saturday night. And you can see the rain snow line is a little further south, a little closer towards, let's say, Richmond and south of Fredericksburg. It's down towards uh, Lynchburg and Roanoke, a little bit the mixed line there. But again, look, the entire northwest half of the state, east, a good portion of West Virginia, most of western and central Maryland, appear to be getting a decent snow out of this event. This is as of Tuesday, December 30th, around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And this is a cold air mass coming south. This is not a marginal cold. This is Arctic cold, and the temperatures are dropped to around 30 degrees during the time of this uh, event. So, again, this has possibilities. And if we look at the radar, this is what the NAM radar simulation is showing. And we can see very clearly a very distinct uh, rain snow line right here. As you can see, you know, here's Richmond, of course, and there's D.C., and over here's Charlottesville, there's Roanoke. And, again, this is pretty moderate snow in this area. So we'll see. Um, the GFS, I looked at the new GFS here, it's very dry, doesn't have much, but the GFS always is badly with southern systems, so we'll see what happens with the high-resolution GFS when that comes out a little later. In terms of the actual snow amounts, uh, 2 to 5 inches is what it looks like, maybe 1 to 3. Again, it depends on the low-level cold air and how heavy it snows, and uh, it may not accumulate much on the roads, mostly on the grassy surfaces, the trees, the lawns, and in the Shenandoah Valley, in the higher elevations. But it's something, and given what it's been like here in the Mid-Atlantic states, you know, uh, it will take everything we can get. Now, you look at New York City, and it looks like New York City and Long Island are going to miss it. I don't know if that's true yet or not. That may be the case. It may say to the south. I don't know that yet. It's just something to watch. Now, let's take a look at the overall pattern here. Now, this is the European model from um, early Saturday morning, the 0 run on Saturday. And you can see by uh, 96 hours out, we have an enormous ridge here. Let me point these features out, get my marker here. We see the, here's the enormous ridge on the west coast. And we have a positive NAO again, unfortunately. A decent po polar vortex here, which is running north to south, south like that. But look at this enormous piece of energy here over California. which that This drops down this way and moves like that. And, of course, it presents a very interesting situation for California, Southern California and Nevada. And if we look at it in more high detail, this is a three-contour closed upper low. And that represents a lot of very cold air here. This is an extreme event, something you don't see a lot in California like this. So I posted a picture of John McEnroe saying you cannot be serious here. And that's a pretty good, I mean, you look at that, you go, what? And then if you leave, look at the next one. Now, this is uh, 7 p.m. on December 31st, New Year's Eve. This is a six contour cutoff low over Southern California and, you know, Southern Nevada. I mean, good googly moogly. 
This is a very impressive system. This is an extreme event, folks, here. Way end of the bell curve, something you don't see all the time. And, of course, in terms of the cold air that it brings down from the upper levels, it could be cold enough for snow. And, the, in fact, that's what the European model is showing. Look at this snow here in the Southern California mountains. Right along here, look at this. You know, that's uh, the green here. That's uh, three, four, five inches of snow here. The yellow is up to six. I'm not going to do that. But it could be a couple inches, you know, above 2,000, 2000 feet, maybe 2,500 feet here in this area. And also, there's also some good snow. Look at the snow from this event up in here. And maybe some snow down towards Vegas as well. So this is a pretty significant event, everything considered. And we see the... Uh, what it looks like here, 7 p.m. on January 1st. The system is now uh, just to the southeast of Vegas. It's in central Arizona. Uh, looks like a lot of heavy snow in there. Maybe some thunder snow in Arizona. Wouldn't surprise me. If you look at the actual maps here, this is the European at, from, again, early on Sunday morning. You can see that the 32-degree line is well to the south here in California. Look at this. Uh, there's, a, there's the zero line, 850. So most of this is a high elevation of snow. And if we clear that, we go to the next one. This is at 108 hours. It looks like Vegas is getting snow. Northern and central Arizona getting hit with snow. Southern uh, Utah is getting hit with snow. Very cold air mass for this time of year. Very impressive. Now, let's talk about what happens beyond this. Now, again, this is the southern, this is the European model here from uh, Saturday afternoon. And uh, let me call my marker. So this is the system which came here. See that piece of energy? This is the one which came down right here. This is the big piece. It's now over here. And uh, we have a, uh, we have a, positive NEO right here you can see this and what happens is because that's positive the southeast ridge builds up the coast and the system goes up the Great Lakes you know all the cold air is still back in here and you can see look at the cold front here the high is now off the coast you have southerly winds and all the snow is back over the Midwest and the upper Great Lakes and we can this is the rain snow line right here see the solid black line so this is all snow in here this is all rain so and there sure enough that's exactly what's going to happen this is, the, this is why you have to have that negative NAO in place. You, you, you want to have the negative NAO in place, not the positive, because it does that. And if we look at our, our teleconnections, our patterns, what do we see? Well, not much. The PNA is still pretty negative, begins to turn neutral towards the end. The NAO goes way positive, which is not a surprise, through January 10th. The WPO is negative all the way through. The East Pacific Oscillation strong, so shows a big strong ridge in Alaska early on and then moves towards neutral by January 10th. So this is, this is a bad sign as well, and this is a bad sign as well. It's moving to mid-January. So, you know, got to tell you how I, how I see it, folks. Now, if we look at the European, this is the European here from the 26th the afternoon run, and they chose an enormous ridge over the southeast United States. And you look at the ridge here. Now, this is your EPO. This is your negative EPO. Uh, we do have one here. This is the negative EPO here. Uh, because it's not just a ridge. The ridge goes all the way up to the Arctic Circle. So that's the negative EPO. But the ridge is out by Alaska. Okay, and that, that, that teleconnects to this right here. Okay, you want the ridge on the west coast. Instead, this thing is way out here. So as a result, it's much further to the west. So the trough, instead of being on the east coast, is back over the Plain States. They're the ones who see the cold air, the Rockies, the Plain States. And we have a southeast ridge. Polar vortex is fairly strong and fairly far south. But it doesn't help you because everything is displaced in the wrong pattern. Now let's take a look at that uh, positive NAO here. Now this is a map from the Atlantic, the North Atlantic, and you can see these huge low pressure systems moving across southern Greenland. And this is what happens when you have a positive NAO. Now this is the European model valid for December 31st. This is the Saturday afternoon run. Look at this system right here. Okay, this is Greenland. See that? That's Greenland right there. Here's eastern Canada. Okay, there's Virginia. There's Florida. There's Maine. So when over here, you see there's England, right? So this is the, there's the say positive NAO. You have a huge low moving right through Greenland. That's a positive NAO. All right, next one. Now, that's just December 31st. What do we see here? January 3rd. Uh-oh, look, another massive system. Look at this baby exploding off the coast. Okay, there's Greenland, as you can see right here. And this system is off the coast and it heads towards England on, Dece on January 3rd. Again, positive NAO. And then finally, well, that's not the same map. This is January 5th. The system that was here is now here, headed towards Ireland and the United Kingdom, and another bomb, 957, is headed towards Greenland. That's a positive NEO. That's a bad sign, folks. That's just not good. And, of course, through all of those, we have a southeast ridge. South, look, there's the southeast ridge. You can see it. And a map, map before it, southeast ridge. So you got to get rid of that positive NEO. It's just killing you. Just killing you on the east coast. All right. 
And in Europe, we can see that enormous ridge here. This is show you this unusual weather pattern here in Europe. I think this is very significant. This enormous ridge that builds from off the coast of the Azores up into uh, England and then all over to Scandinavia. Notice what happens here. The ridges roll over. Okay. Notice the ridge goes. Um, see the ridge? It begins to push this way. See that? And that's called the rollover ridge. When the ridge just flops over, when the ridge goes like this, it goes and it flops over this way. And as a result, what happens is that forces up below over Serbia a drop down towards Rome and you get a potentially Rome snowstorm. This would be for uh, December 30th and December 31st. And you can see what it looks like here. There's the low over Sicily, just to the southeast. Look at the Arctic High, 1035, 1037 over Romania and Austria, pumping the Arctic cold. And look how cold it is over Rome here, folks. That's really impressive stuff. These are 850 temperatures. Rome's 850 temperatures, according to this map, something around um, minus 9 Minus 8? I mean, that's cold stuff for Rome. That's plenty cold enough to bring the snow storm down to the surface for Rome. Very impressive. Okay, let's talk about back to the U.S. here for a second. Now, uh, the America, <coughs> the, here's the European model for uh, the Saturday afternoon one here for December, uh, excuse me, for January 2nd. And what it's doing is it's finally knocking down the southeast ridge, according to the model. It, uh, there's the southeast ridge. It's got weaker. It's blowing the front through. The cold front comes through. And we can see the Arctic front right here. Okay, and here's our Arctic high, and there's another one up in this way. So this does not look like a terrible pattern here. Look how cold it is. There's the black line here is your 0850 line. The purple line is minus 20. The minus 20 line is into Chicago. It's into Kansas. It's into uh, central New York State. This looks like a very cold-looking map, and a lot of energy in the southern stream. Maybe mid-January doesn't look that bad. Well, maybe. If we look at the pattern, how it shifts, this is the, again, the sa Sunday uh, European Ensemble, excuse me, the Saturday European Ensemble, and we can see our polar vortex is right here. Let me uh, call this up so we can see it. The polar vortex is right here. You can see right there. Now, we still have a southeast ridge here. Why? Because look at this. Remember, that's a big storm over Greenland. So we have a positive NAO, which means you have a southeast ridge. You know, that's what makes it very big. But the polar vortex is here, and the app of the axis is still this way. Look where the ridge is, folks, still out here over Alaska. So the European ensemble is much further to the west with the pattern than the operationally European. So that's an important point here. Don't get caught up by this operationally European, even though it looks great. It doesn't. The European ensembles are much more hostile for East Coast winter weather lovers than the operational run. Now, this is the day 10. Now, again, what happens here is that because the vortex begins to drop south, here's your polar vortex. See what's dropping south now a little bit? What it does is it knocks down the southeast ridge. Yes, the NAO is still positive with that big storm over Greenland, but it's knocking down the southeast ridge. As a result, we get some cold air in here, and uh, the ridge is still here over Alaska, but now we have a big, broad U-shaped trough, and we're finally getting some cold air at day 10. How long does it last? That I don't know. Well, let's we'll have to wait and see. And if we look at the, uh, uh, this is from the other day. I posted this is this is all the models here for the MJO. This is from December 19th, December 20th. I realize it's old, but the models continue to show this, and you can see that uh, it shows it moves through phases four, five, and six, and these are all warm patterns here in January. So uh, that's what we're looking forward to. Now, if we look at the other MJO plots, this is from the folks Kyle uh, McRitchie, master's student there, getting his doctorate over at University of Albany. Uh, you can see that his plots show the MJO. MJO in phase four, as you can see right here, call it my marker, there's a phase four mild, phase five, phase six, but then it gets on phase seven here by the end of January. See this, some of the models, mid to end of January, 19th to 24th, cold here into February, and if we look at the new plots, which just came out this evening, we see all of them now, and this is significant, all of them are right here in phase seven by the end of January, which means February is going to be in phase eight, if this is correct. Also, look how strong it is. This is a fairly intense MJO impulse, phase eight and phase one in February. Well, what does that look like? Well, this is what it looks like. This is January phase seven. We see nice blocking here over Greenland finally. This looks like a negative NEO, a uh, nice uh, area of low pressure here, a mean trough over the eastern United States. That's not bad. January phase eight. That looks really good. Can't complain about that. This is February phase eight. Now, this is the snowstorm pattern. Look at this. Monster blocking over Greenland and eastern Canada here. A huge negative anomaly over Virginia, North Carolina. This is snowstorm city. This, the, in phase eight in February is known as a snowstorm pattern. 
uh, and that's what that indicates. And this is a f- and now if it goes to the phase one, which is the next phase in February, again very promising looking pattern, a negative NAO, a nice ridge on the west coast, a big area of low pressure over the Gulf on the up the east coast and out to the western Atlantic. So this looks very promising. So there is some potential here for the second half of the winter. It's not going to turn out. Everyone thought it's going to turn out, but it's not completely dead yet either. This is Meteorologist DT from WeatherWisk.com. I'll talk to you soon.